topic of today's discussion is Dirac equation. So now, as you all know, the energy expression in the relativistic regime is given as e is, uh, e is equal to under root of p square c square plus of m naught square c to the power four. I think I don't need to tell you about the notations. Uh, you are obvious. Obviously, you obviously know that m naught is the rest mass. Okay, and c is the speed of light. C is the momentum. So what? Sorry. So what uh, Dirac tried to do is he tried to linearize this, this equation. This under root is not looking so good here. So what Dirac did was he assumed some form, some form, which I will tell you. Dirac assumed this of the form z times of alpha dotted with p plus of beta m naught c squared. So this was the form assumed by Dirac. So this we also call as this is also known as the Dirac Hamiltonian. Okay. Uh, as you know, uh, the Dirac question now will be given as h d psi is equal to e of psi. Fine. So this is the Dirac Hamiltonian. But we have assumed this form, but we do not know anything about the alpha and beta right now. So that's the discussion of today. The what about the alpha and beta? Okay. So we will try to uh, derive the nature of alpha and beta. Okay. So for that, we need to do something. Uh, first, let me do one thing. Let me square both the sides. Let's see what do we have. So if we square, square both sides of this equation, so you will be having p square c square plus of m naught square c to the power 4. Similarly, if you square the right hand side, you, you will have this term multiplied twice. So c alpha dot p plus of p times m naught c square multiplied with itself. Fine. c of alpha dot p plus of beta m naught c squared. Fine. Now you can take common c c square from here. So what do you will have? If you take the c square common, you will be having c square times p square plus of m naught square c square. Similarly, you can also take c common from this bracket and c common from this bracket. So you will be having c square multiplied by c times of alpha dot p plus of beta m naught c. Okay as you have taken one c uh, outside so only you will be left with only one c times c sorry there will be no c as you have taken c common plus of alpha dot p plus of beta m naught c okay i hope it's clear so the c square will easily get cancelled out so now you have cancelled the c square what else we can do now you also note that this p square is nothing but p x square plus of p y square plus of p c square. Okay, and m naught square c square is a constant. Fine. Oh. Now we can substitute the value of uh, uh, alpha and beta. So you will be having, if you multiply the terms together, you will be having alpha x p x plus of alpha y p y plus of alpha z p z plus of beta m naught c multiplied with itself multiplied with itself alpha x p x plus of alpha y p y plus of alpha z p z plus of beta m naught of c okay so now we will just solve the right hand side of this equation that is this side and then we will compare with it with the uh, left hand side so we will come basically we will compare the coefficient of px square both sides so you will get some idea about alpha and beta what are they okay so let me uh, write so by rhs we are just solving the rhs for, uh, for timing okay so first you need to multiply this first term that is alpha x px with uh, with these four terms with this 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 and this Okay, so you will be having, if you do this, you will be having alpha x px multiplied by alpha x px, that will be alpha x square px square. Similarly, if you multiply this with the second term, you will be having alpha x px plus of, sorry, alpha x px, alpha y 
py okay or you can simply write this uh, as alpha x alpha y px py that makes no difference third term if you multiply it with the third term you will be having alpha x px alpha z pz and with the fourth term when you multiply this with the fourth term you will be having alpha x px beta m not c fine now you have multiplied the first term with all of these terms so now this is turn to multiply the second term with all of the four terms so you will be having alpha y p y alpha x sorry alpha y p y alpha x p x plus of alpha y square p y square plus of alpha y p y alpha z p z plus of alpha y p y beta times m naught of c fine so now it's turn to multiply the third term so now you will multiply the third term with all of the fourth term so you will be having alpha z p z alpha x p x plus of alpha plus of alpha z p z alpha y p y plus of alpha z square p z square plus of alpha z p z beta m not c now it's turn to multiply the last term that is the beta m not c with all the four terms so you will be having beta times m not of c alpha x px plus beta times m naught of c alpha y p y plus of beta times of m naught c alpha z p z plus of beta squared m naught squared c squared fine so we have did the multiply the first second third and fourth term with uh, this so these are the equation this is very long set of equation but this process is very straightforward this is lengthy but straightforward you can do it okay so now uh, we will uh, we will see if we can clap any terms together or make some manipulations okay so first see first we write the simply px squared py squared pz squared terms together you will get the reason why we are doing so let me use the different color so the, these will not all get mixed up so first first this term alpha x p x is alpha x is sorry. this term we can write as alpha x squared p x squared fine what happened times p x squared similarly you have the term alpha y square p y squared alpha y squared p y squared and the third term you have alpha z squared pz squared and the fourth term you have this plus of beta square and not a square p square fine now these four term are taken care of now if you see this term has px comma py the second term has px comma py does any other terms have px comma py obviously when you multiply the second term with the second you will have that so you have px comma py in here too okay so let me take px comma py common from these two terms so when you take px comma py common you will be left with alpha x alpha y plus of alpha y alpha x comma px py plus similarly does any other term have this now this px comma pz this has px comma pz does any other term has, has px comma pz yes this term has a px comma pz also so you can take the px comma pz common and you will be left with alpha x alpha z plus of alpha z alpha x comma px pz fine you will be saying why we are not just adding these two we can't do that we don't know the nature of alpha x alphas right now okay we are trying to discover the nature so we you can't do that with them so the third uh, third term you will be having is yeah you have this term 
this term has p y p z okay any other time does any other term has p y p z you see any other term have p y p z yes this term has p y p z let's do that too so if you do that you will be having you will be having what you will be having let me put it here so you will be having plus of alpha y alpha z alpha y alpha z plus alpha z alpha y times p y p z fine so these are the terms now what's remaining let us see hmm. so you can take if you take a keen look you can see that this term has px m not c and also this term has px m not c okay so you can take the px m not c common from these two so when you take that common you will be having what do i did i did i did take a common px m not of c so you will be having alpha x beta plus of beta alpha x similarly have a prop if you have a closer look you can see this time has py beta not c py m not c and this time also has py m not c so let me take that to that common too so you will be having alpha y beta plus beta alpha y and the common term is py m not of c similarly so last term is remaining is this okay now this only this term so this term has P Z beta M not C. So let me take that common. P Z P Z M not C. Beta is inside beta. We are not taking common. So you will be having alpha y beta plus beta alpha y. Okay. So you can always uh, do a cross check. How many terms are there? One, two, three, four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. So you should have sixteen terms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten. 11 12 13 14 15 16 so you have done everything properly now you can proceed further okay so now it's uh, now it's turn to compare this with the lhs but do you have L in the lhs if you remember what do you had in the lhs let me write the lhs here for you so you had the lhs as this was the lhs px square P x square plus p y square plus p z square plus of plus of m not square c square m not square c square is equal to this thing. Okay. So if we compare the coefficients, so let me write that for you. Comparing the coefficients. So what do we have comparing the coefficient? First, let me compare the coefficients of px square. So px squared's coefficient is one. Okay, so alpha x square must be equal to one. So what do you get uh, when you compare the coefficient for px square's coefficient? You have alpha x square in the RHS, and in the LHS you have that is one. So x, alpha x square is equal to one. Okay, basically. Similarly, py square's coefficient is alpha y square in the RHS. And in the LHS, it is one. Okay, so this is also one. Similarly, for the alpha p z square coefficient is alpha z square, which is one in the LHS. Okay, or similarly, the beta square is also here. It is one. So beta square is one. So in general, you can say you can uh, alpha x alpha by alpha z. You can say alpha j square is equal to one, which is also equal to beta square. Okay. So I said, said uh, I just said that it is alpha z, where j is one, two, and three. Let me write j is x, y, and z. Fine. Similarly, now we have p x p y term. Is there any um, cross term p x p y in the LHS? No, there is no cross term. So sim so simply this quantity will be equal to zero. So you will be having alpha x alpha y plus of alpha y alpha x 
this quantity equals to zero. Similarly, there is no cross term in the RHS PXP like something like PXP. So this term will be also be zero. So alpha x alpha z plus alpha z alpha x is also equals to zero. Similarly, no py pz term in the RHS. So you will be having py alpha z plus of alpha z alpha y equals to zero. So you can also generalize this. Okay. You can say alpha j alpha k plus alpha k alpha z does not, uh, is equals to zero something like that. Let me write that for you explicitly. You can say alpha j alpha k plus of alpha k alpha z equals to zero. Uh, it means when alpha uh, both the alphas are different, then that will be zero. So, is there any px term in the LHS? No, there is no px. So this term will be also be zero. That's for sure. So alpha x beta plus of beta alpha x will be equal to 0. Similarly, alpha y beta plus beta alpha y will be 0. And similarly, alpha... Oh, sorry. This was alpha z, I guess. This was alpha z. I wrote... Alpha z. Similarly, alpha z beta plus of beta alpha z is equal to 0. You can also generalize this as alpha z beta plus of beta alpha z is equals to zero okay you can also club these two together with the help of the chronic data you know or not no, no can't do that okay so you have these uh, these these things when you compare the coefficient what do you get with the help of this So with the help of this, you can see these are anti-commutating. The second column showing you that these are anti-commutating. So these must be matrices. As you know, number do not anti-commute. Numbers do not anti-commute. So this means these must be matrices. Number, numbers do not anti-commute. Numbers do not anti-commute. So these must be matrices must be matrices what kind of matrices that you don't know square matrices or what that you don't know how can you know that okay for that uh, we will see further how can we how can we probe more into these alpha x and alpha y's and get their properties okay now let me come back to the dirac equation so what do we have as a dirac equation so this uh, this was our uh, this was our hamiltonian dirac hamiltonian okay so what do we have we have h d of psi we have h d of psi is equals to e of psi. so this we have where our dirac hamiltonian is c times of alpha x px plus of alpha y py plus of alpha z pv it is c alpha dot p plus of beta m not beta m not c square this whole acting on psi giving us e psi okay so uh, this was our dirac hamiltonian so you see this c alpha dot p thing this c alpha dot p thing can be written as something else. What? What? It can be written as. So you know p. P is given as minus i h cross del. Minus i. Minus i h cross del. Okay. So you can write it as minus of i h cross c. Minus of i h cross c minus i h cross c what you are left with is alpha dot delta okay plus of p time not c square times psi equals to e of psi fine ah so now it's going great so the thing you see here let me move, move, make it more illustrative for you. Where this e psi can be written as i h cross del by del t. 
which is equals to minus of i h cross c alpha dot del <coughs> plus of beta m naught of c square this acting on psi and this thing acting on psi 2 okay so let's see this is the first order in time this is first order in time first order in time similarly this del is also first order in time first order in time so you get the reason for linearizing this equation so you have both the sides of both the sides in the first order in time okay when the space is this first order in space and first order in time sorry i have written time here space first order in space and first order in time that means it is an relativistically invariant equation so that's the beauty of linearizing the equation okay now now we know so as this video already had been already had been too long so i will discuss uh, we have not talked completely into the properties of alpha and beta right now so we need to discuss some more properties of these which we will discuss in the next video i will make a another part a separate video for that as this video has been 20 minute long so i will discuss the properties in that video okay for today uh, that's all thank you